in numerous parts of the Bible that's just very easy to look at the text and think, okay, yeah, that's nothing much to see there. Uh, probably a classic example would be the biblical genealogies. Uh, you look at the genealogy of Matthew's gospel, you think, okay, there was a whole bunch of people before Jesus who's related to, you know, Joseph and Mary. But it's interesting in the genealogy of, of Matthew's gospel that he mentions four prominent women. Uh, and people often, often are asked why are these women mentioned? Is it because they were all um, Gentile or non-Jews? Or is it because they all had somewhat um, irregular sexual unions? And you've got to think about what's the significance of that? And, it, and if you weren't looking for that, if you just glossed over it, you, you'd, never, you'd never even think to, to look or reflect on that. But if you, if, you, if you go a little bit deeper and actually look at who these people are, what they're remembered for in the history of Israel, you, you can pick up these sort of nuggets. You know, uh, there, there is a bit of you know, history in Jesus' own lineage when he's adopted into the family of David. And so it does help if you've got like a resource like the NIV Faith Life Study Bible uh, that can then help you explore this or, or at least point out some of these little things that you would otherwise never even notice. I think there's some really good reasons why examining a diversity of viewpoints can be very helpful in your Bible study. And that's because different traditions or denominations will gravitate towards different themes or motifs in the Bible. Uh, things that will be a centerpiece for one group might be peripheral to another. Let me give you examples. You know, my Presbyterian friends love covenant. You say the word covenant. And, and they, 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 over, they, they, they bubble up with joy and excitement at the mention of covenant. They love it. So if you want to know about covenant, ask a Presbyterian. They love covenant. Of course, if you're talking about the Lord's Supper, you know, the Lord's Table, the Eucharist, my Catholic friends love that. I mean, when they read the Gospel of John, they find echoes of the Lord's Supper everywhere, you know, in John 6 and all sorts of places. So if you, if you want to enter into a tradition that's really excited about the Lord's table, the Lord's Supper, talk to some Catholics. Or, you know, when I want to talk about the church and the priesthood of all, of all believers, my Baptist friends, they are all into that. You want to talk about the church of and for the people, you know, the priesthood of all believers, uh, that type of thing. You know, the, the Baptists have got that one under pat. They know about that. And it's good because you can draw on these different perspectives, these different traditions and denominations, and they'll all have some sort of insight. They'll all have some sort of, you know, richness and vibrancy that in the very least will make you consider things that you, that you have not normally or naturally thought thought of and it'll be very thought provoking and, and, and you'll be enriched by the, the exposure to different ideas and that's something very good to have with you as you're reading to the Bible because it means you're not just echoing your own thoughts, not just rehearsing or regurgitating your own ideas, you're being challenged, confronted and enriched by a whole variety of perspectives that you otherwise may never have encountered. There's several passages in the Bible which are tricky. Okay, now, you know, as a Protestant, I believe in the clarity of Scripture, but uh, even in the Protestant confessions, no one says that all passages of Scripture are equally clear. And if you're going to get a grasp of some of the tricky or hairier passages of the Bible, then you need to look at multiple viewpoints. Let me give you one good example. You know, Romans 7, you know, uh, you know the wretched man, you know, the I who struggles under the law. Uh, who's being talked about? Is this Paul and his own personal biography? If it is, is it, is it him as a Christian or before he was a Christian? Or is, or is he kind of like impersonating Adam or is it Israel under the law? I mean, how do you decide? I mean, there's no right one answer. You know, you, you've, you've got to look at multiple viewpoints in order to make up your mind. And there are some passages of Scripture I think you really do need to look outside your own tradition, look out, outside your own um, assumptions, look outside your own school. Uh, and, 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 and I think you'll be better for that, even if you find your own view affirmed. Uh, at least you'll have now more resources to think, well, why that might be correct. Or you'll be challenged to think, well, on second thoughts, uh, after considering that, I think this passage like Romans 7 means something else entirely from what I've been used to. And, you know, and, and it's important because, you know, you don't want to study the Bible living in an echo chamber where all you hear um, said to you and taught to you is what, you're, what, what, what you hear all the time. Uh, it, it's good to bring, a, dare I say, a little bit of... Um, 
diversity to the gene pool of your own exegesis and Bible study because you can really learn, you can really appreciate, and you can be, become a much fuller Christian by listening to others. And there's a number of helpful charts and timelines, like let me tell you, trying to map the Herodian family is like trying to map out the Kardashians. You're trying to wonder like who's who, that type of a thing. Or, you know, where is Abraham in relation to Moses and David? Or, you know, uh, Joya Kim or Jehoya Kim? I mean, who are these people? How, are they, how do they all fit together? So you've got a number of these charts that help you hold it all together and give you a basic grasp of, you know, where, when you're reading the Bible, where are you in Israel's sacred history or where are you in the New Testament? Who are all these people?